Bro, you're the nicest UFC <laughs> fighter in the world, dude. Shout out basement talk, man. But I'm gonna buy at least two of your ears off. I make more than a million dollars in a day sometimes. <laughs> you better promise what time even is it right now? Probably 7, 18, first fight time for starting. You to get a watch, oh, that's man. perfect, bro. Yeah, this is we'll, perfect because yeah. we're starting. That, let's, let's, let's should we start it? Let's yeah, get into this shit, dude. All so right, El guys. Chapo lives next to you. What's going nah. on? Dude. <laughs> yeah, so I bought my ranch down in Florence, and my neighbor's El Chapo. I lost him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing. Welcome to Basement Talk, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, welcome to Basement it's, it's Talk. It's a shame, though. I lost a neighbor. Uh, the Unabomber passed away, and I lost a neighbor. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had That's butthole crazy. cancer, you know. Just got him good. Federal <laughs> prison, baby. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I'm, joking. Oh, my God. No, I'm not joking that we lost a neighbor, but, yeah, he deserved to die. <laughs> yeah. Damn, All right, the that's Unabomber. it. We're getting yeah. right into it, you know? We, uh, um, welcome back to Basement Talk, guys. Today we have a legend here. We got AJ Moss. Yes, you guys sir. remember we had Alexa on the podcast. This is Alexa's brother. He has uh, many talents. Yeah. He's a very successful businessman, very successful athlete. And uh, we're, we're uh, also happy to be back in the basement. Yep. Yeah. So I, I know you guys are watching this. The OGs will know this is pretty wild. So this is the base. Yeah. This is the first time back, which is insane. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Dude. For, yeah, the no, viewers, for the, for the awesome. viewers that don't know who you are, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is AJ Muss. Um, I was born and raised. I was born in New Jersey, raised in Colorado, lived in Europe for a little bit. Uh, I went to the Olympics 2018. I was a professional snowboard for 21 years, 20 years, um, retired 2022. And then towards the end of my career, when I was done snow kind of fading away, cause like the last four years of my career, I was kind of miserable to be honest. I was competing cause I was still good and still competitive, but I didn't want to be there. Why? Um, politics, man. I mean, sports at the highest level ends up being politics. I wasn't getting along with the Federation. I wasn't getting along with their business structure. There was some stuff that happened with the head coach. He went to federal prison and died by the feds. Um, Is I he your neighbor now? <laughs> yeah, 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 right? <laughs> no, he, he's in a white collar prison. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just I ex helped expose him, bring stuff to light. He was being inappropriate with women and oh, wow. kind of using his position of power for uh, his naughty gains. That's, that's I guess the best way yeah. to put it. And I didn't. I didn't have it. I just wasn't. wasn't about it. I've always been. I was raised more or less by my mother, and I'm very protective over women, and I just didn't appreciate it, and kind of put me on the sideline. And I never needed them. They always needed me. Oh. They used mm -hmm. me for financial gains. I never wanted them. Mm -hmm. So that's how like U.S. snowboarding works. Is like like you, Sean White, for an example. Sean White's not a part of the U.S. snowboard team when he was competing. He would join the Olympic team two or three weeks before the Olympics. Because he, they would get financial gains from him being a part of the U.S. Olympic team, and it wouldn't benefit him at all. So he was able to control his training and his structuring the same way I wanted to control my training, my structure, my path. I wanted to have as much control as I can as my path. I forgot about Sean White. That yeah, guy is like no. an OG. Yeah, He's a legend. He, have you snowboarded with him? Yeah, all a the, few times. How is he in person, like not on the so camera? Like, I know him from an athlete's perspective, right? As another athlete. Like to me, he's just another guy. It's a competitor. He's a competitor. And to me, like pro athletes are cool. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But they're another, another person. I look at people as that's what they do. That's not, it's not who they are. Mm. Snowboarding is what I do. It's not who I am. It's not how I identify as a professional athlete. Like I don't make it my image like mm. i love hanging out with i would say normal people i don't really enjoy hanging out with that many professional athletes that have an ego stuff like that like we're just people like i'm gonna i'm gonna judge you based on your merit you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you're just a person we're Absolutely. not anything special we just chose a different path than someone else i know now people are like oh i want to like hang out with this person or they think some like people that you see on tv is going to be so much cooler than they are when you're just, just hanging around your buddies person. right especially social media oh my oh, god it makes this people a million look so much followers cooler. yeah he looks so cool in his freaking yeah. house you start getting all jazzed when it's probably not going to be as fun as you just hanging out with your buddies like from no, high school not or even something close they like i hate social media i absolutely hate it like you have to do it as an athlete if you like I at one point I was like I have to be the lowest follower blue check mark ever <laughs> when you didn't when you actually had to earn it and I'll pay for it like yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I had like a thousand followers in a blue check mark like <laughs> yeah. I didn't care yeah. like, it was it was almost what did you what did you Wait, do did when you, you woke up you when that? you woke up and you I didn't even like, know. I didn't even know. Alexa told me. I was at yeah. the Olympics and she's like, you have a blue check mark. I'm like, what the fuck's that? Like, I have no idea what the hell that is. <laughs> but, the only thing I used it for is like 
Love my girlfriend, but uh, I use it to slide <laughs> yeah. in DMs. Like, yeah, that's, it, that's the only benefit I saw. Also, I wish I like, had the one slide in, in though. Is it like, hey, I got yeah, a what's your go-to DM what? slide in? <laughs> I don't do this often, <laughs> but uh, I might as well shoot my shot. Like, yeah. just play it off. Like, yeah. I had my phone when I was younger. That's yeah. why I wish I had one. It'd probably <laughs> work. Well, well in you, the you beginning, can buy one now. Yeah. Nah, I can buy it. Dude. In the beginning, a blue check mark would allow you to go into someone's DM without having without having to be accepted. So I could slide in DMs and I don't go to that accepted page. I go straight to the top. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fuck, straight to the top. Dude. See, well, you wouldn't know, dude. God so damn. what age did you start snowboarding? Or what was your first like memory of snowboarding? I have a terrible memory because I was in a coma and on life support for a while. So I had really bad brain damage. But uh, I think my first actual memory of snowboarding was traveling with my mom. My mom worked in, in Colorado and instead of like putting us in daycare... When we were super young, she put us in ski school, and I'd just go to ski school and snowboard all day long and then come home. And I was homeschooled um, from sixth grade on, traveled a bunch. So, like, to me, snowboarding, I think I kind of have a little bit of a different path. Is like, I love snowboarding. It just happened to be what I was doing when I decided I wanted to be an Olympian. Like, wow. I didn't care what sport I went to the Olympics for. I'm like, I'm going to be an Olympian, and I just happened to be snowboarding. Uh. Like, if I was skiing at the time, I would have been a try to be an Olympian in skiing. If I was shooting clays, like, it didn't are you matter. Just as, are you just as good at skiing? Yeah, I'm a very good skier. Do you think skiing's harder or snowboarding? Or, like, do they have, do they have like, beef? And which, which one do you prefer in general? Uh, like, if I'm going out with friends, like, a bunch of really close friends, and we're just, like, riding groomers, yeah, I'll probably just ski. Yeah. But snowboarding powder is... The most majestic thing in the world. Like, it is just something different. I've never it's touched like surfing. Snow. He's never touched yeah, snow. Yeah, he's never, never no. touched snow. Yeah. Uh, we can't talk anymore. So I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> shut down, dude. Um, oh, shit. Snowboarding powder is my favorite. Like, now yeah. I haven't touched a snowboard probably since 2023. Yeah. And if I if I am, I'm taking a snowmobile and just going out in the backcountry. Like, I don't yeah. want to go to a ski resort. I just want to be alone in the, in the backcountry riding pow. Yeah. Like my only dream and goal left in snowboarding is to do a first descent, which means I go to Alaska or I go to Patagonia and I ride down a mountain that no one's ever ridden before. The first one to descend it. That's my oh. only goal left in snowboarding. Whoa. That's pretty fucking dangerous though, right? Yeah. There could be avalanches. When you would you see stuck. yourself doing that? Uh, spring, springtime 2025 is probably when I'll do it. Really? And are you waiting on like a sponsor for that plan? No, I'm just, I have a lot of stuff going on with work yeah. and business. Why do you want to do that? I was a snowboard racing is what I did and what I went to the Olympics for, but backcountry snowboarding was always my passion. Like, um, Terje Hawkinson, um, Jones were like my idols in snowboarding. They were like, they were, it's like back in the day where they just have video parts, right? And like the big thing wasn't contests. It's just you and your boys filming all winter long and launching a video mm. and like the old school video yeah. parts. And I just love that style. It's more free. It lets you express your image of snowboarding. Like there's no right or wrong way. Where contests, snowboarding, and freestyle snowboarding like, okay, I'm going to do a back-to-back -back 10. And there's like an algorithm of what you need to accomplish to win an event. Like, snowboard backcountry is an expression of yourself. It's, it's like how styling. your style... It's like surfing, right? Yeah. Like video part surfing compared to contest surfing. It's them, how they express their style and their personality. And it's like the it's like the dirt biking versus like the Axel Hodges style. Uh, yeah. Right? The freestyle like versus the track. Like track versus, versus freestyle. Versus free riding. Yeah. Or track versus free riding. Yeah. It's the same see, style. See, I'm, I don't understand the free riding. I, I hate it. I hate Is it. Is that like, tra that's like trails and trails. desert riding? And same all that thing stuff, too, right? going to the skate park with your buddies and messing around versus yeah. like competition skating, right? It's yeah. the same style. But, it's more um, badass, that's for sure. Like I, I don't saw, like I don't like like being in the mold. Yeah, like, mm. not a rebel, but like I never like a lot of my competitors I didn't get along with because I just didn't, I don't can you curse on here? Yeah, yeah. I didn't give a fuck no, about other people. No, okay. Like I didn't give a shit. Like I was there to conquer and destroy. Like one of my downfalls during my career is I didn't want to beat you. I wanted to embarrass you. Mm. I wanted to win. So I wanted to beat you so bad and win so by so much that you contemplate ever continuing snowboarding. So I either won events or I blew up in a spectacular fashion. Like there was no <laughs> in between. It was a downfall of winning an overall title, but that's just who I am. That's how I wanted to do it. I saw you were doing like uh, the the plane jumps and what was the parachuting with the like the squirrel suits? Yeah, I wing suits. I you 
Yeah. Yeah. I have oh. like 400 jumps ish, 500 jumps. Dude, the stuff that some of those videos of you like hanging with one arm off the helicopters yeah. and stuff, that stuff Bro. is wild. Yeah, that was so me. So you just really like playing with life, basically. We can I just put it in that category. I feel close to death. Oh, that's crazy. Like normal day to day stuff. Like I just, I'm bored. I'm tired. You'd say, but it, like the only thing that really excites me is feeling like I'm going to die. Is it the adrenaline? Yeah, like yeah. Adrenaline I'm like straight junkie. up adrenaline junkie. Yeah. Like it's going to kill me and I have no <laughs> doubts about it and I wouldn't change the world. How do you land on that squirrel suit? Uh, you deploy a parachute. Okay. So there's a parachute in that. It's so thin. My though. container that's on my back has a parachute. Okay. I actually have it in the truck. Do you have any that's close cool. calls on that thing? Are you like um, slipping holes and stuff? I have one. <laughs> I've won. Me and a dude hit each other pretty hard. And no like, way. I almost knocked him out. And he knocked the wind out of me. How fast are you going? 140 miles an hour. We hit each so other. you're just hitting another body <laughs> midair at 140 yeah, miles an hour. Yeah, we were like flying together and I we flared and I hit this thing called a burble, which means I lost lift because okay. these suits work off lift. It fills my suit with yeah. air. It's like a plane. And we, we fly like up current. until we stall. And when I stall, I hit someone's burble, which is dead air. And it deflated one of my wings and caused me to kind of dive Dang, right. So how do you recover? How do you recover from that midair? If I was in there, I'd just be squirming, dude. I like I wouldn't know what to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, you just stay. You stay calm, stay relaxed, and then you start to dive to gain a lift again. Oh, uh, okay. And get yeah. like the wind back under your wings or whatever. Get the wind well, wind back into your suit. And then I get super complacent, which is a bad habit. Like normally you're supposed to deploy anywhere from five to three thousand feet. I deploy like two to fifteen hundred <laughs> <Dude>. feet. <laughs> Like I like to feel the, gr- the ground the rush. You already adrenaline, and then and then AJ's like, I need more. I yeah, need he's more. like, yeah. I need more. I need more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, oh, I, I have good. like two cutaways, but like skydiving seems like this big scary thing. There's so many contingencies. Yeah, like no one really burns in anymore. Which burns in means like your canopy doesn't open because you have this device on your back called an AAD, which fires based on barometric pressures and the amount of speed that you're dropping at. So like it'll automatically deploy. So say if I hit something or I pass out in a flat spin, my parachute's gonna come overhead. I'm just gonna hit the ground really hard because uh-huh. I'm not controlling the parachute because you have to the, flare it. Are you jumping out of you're jumping out of a plane or are you jumping off like a high platform like on a? I've jumped out of planes. I've jumped out of helicopters and I've jumped out of hot air balloons. I haven't base jump. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why I haven't base jump is because like my mom has supported me through everything. It's the only thing she's ever asked me not to do. Because uh, if okay. I base jump, I'm, it's not. It's when I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. People don't live base jumping. Is it like that? So I think it's like wingsuit base jump is like the first year it's one in ten, and then after that it doubles. Like one out of ten dudes die a year. Jeez. That's like cool. I have two dudes that I know that passed away. That Thank God for in. your mom keeping you safe. Yeah, it's <laughs> for her because I know I want to fly as close and as fast to the ground as possible. Oh. So I just didn't haven't got into it. Have you ever thought about going to Mount Everest? No, it's too mainstream now. That's like not enough. That's adrenaline. corny, Kyler. It's not enough that's sauce. corny. It's not Kyler. corny. It's just like AJ has way too much sauce for yeah, exactly. yeah. That's some weird shit. Corny. You it's heard just... him. He's trying to go where nobody's been. <laughs> yeah. Kobe wants to go to base camp over there. I want to go to Nepal and do the base Nepal. camp hike. That'd mm-hmm. be cool because I have a buddy that's from Nepal. So he's going to do some of it and then just give up. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. That's what I was saying, dude. <laughs> hey, you're going to do it. Could you say you climbed Mount Everest? If I'm going to get two weeks, no, no. Hey, if this video gets if this video gets a ton of likes, then I. I can actually I can quit my day job, but if I got two weeks, dude, to like have a vacation, I don't even want to walk. Bro. I think he just wants to do some <laughs> like, mad honey be up real, there, dude. Like I'd rather just chill by the beach or like yeah, I don't blame you. Do like a resort style, but yeah, I don't think I can hike. I don't I don't even want to walk, dude. You just have to have no get. You just can't give up. <laughs> I know. If all there, you give up, you die. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> there, Kobe would be halfway up the mountains. The mountains I can't. I don't have brew. time to train for that hike, bro. Yeah. <laughs> There was a joke when we were in London with Kobe. We'd be like probably an hour away from a spot and we're just walking around everywhere and we'd be like, Kobe, we're five minutes away, dude. And he'd be like, oh, sick. And then we'd be like an hour later just <laughs> yeah, walking. Yeah. Kobe's like fucking dying, pissed. Bro. I'm like, sweating. dude, it's a vacation. Dude. Yeah. I should have took a taxi. I'm not a big runner, but I like rucking. So yeah. I get in a bag with a bunch of weight and rucking around. Oh, I enjoy that. But I like... I, I was when I was in Europe. I'm like, you guys are doing this European shit, like hiking to the top of a mountain just to hike down. That sounds like the most boringest thing to me. Like, I want to <laughs> hike up and then do something stupid on the way down. Bro, I like your like hat and your your clothing. Like your <laughs> the cowboy hat. What do you yeah. think about like people in Europe and how they dress and stuff? What do you, think about, what do you think like about the, tight jeans? Like the dudes in Europe. I mean, if you can rock it, then rock it. But not my style. <laughs> I don't really have a style. I just don't care. Like, I don't really care what other people think of me i wear what i think is comfortable and i wear whatever and like i live on a ranch or live on two thousand acres i ran cattle most of my life like 
I wear a cowboy hat. I wear flannels and wear boots. Like this is what it's I a do. Good American like man. when I first moved, when I first moved here, <laughs> people must have thought I was uh, what's his name, Little Nas. Like, I didn't, <laughs> like people were looking at me like, who is this guy walking yeah. around in a cowboy hat in Orange County? It's like the gay cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm just Little like, Nas. Uh, okay, maybe I'll stop wearing the cowboy hat. <laughs> I always wore boots. That's what so was funny. it like getting your like first call into the Olympics? Or Team USA calling you. How did that feel for you? Um, it was a little, like, to level with most people. It was a little anticlimactic. Mm. As in, like, I was so focused on winning a medal and doing what I needed to do. I kind of knew it was coming. Mm. Like, I was, that was one of my best seasons on the World Cup. I was top five in the world. I was top five ranked. I think going to the Olympics, I was fifth ranked in the world. Like, I knew I was going. I just, like, the first race of the season, I think I took fourth. So I knew I was going. Um... The awakening moment for me was opening ceremonies when I walked into opening ceremonies. Because as a kid, that's what everyone sees, right? Yeah. You're representing your country. You're walking with your nation and you're walking into the stadium. And that's like truly when you feel like you become an Olympian. Like I still am on the premise of like, say if you go to the Olympics, you get hurt, you never get to compete. You're not an Olympian. Mm -hmm. Until you compete in your sport, you become an Olympian. But until you compete, you are not an Olympian. You don't deserve that title. Dang. Yeah. That's and that's that's so true though. Yeah, you can yeah. be like, it makes sense. It makes you have like sense, a World sure. Cup medal, but you like never came off the bench. You were just hurt the whole time. Still sick, You're like in the hotel. Yeah, it's rubbed sick, up by but it's, it like just doesn't therapist. feel for like good. hockey and sports. It's a little different, I think, because you're still a part of a team. Like you earned your spot to be there, and you're representing your team. Yeah, it's, yeah, one, of my, that, it's one of my Olympic rings I gave oh, to my sister. That's oh, that's super so cool. What? That's so cool. I so didn't know they do that. That's a different one. So that's a one that a sponsor made for me from Japan. Um, but my Dude. actual Olympic ring, I don't wear it anymore. It sits in home in a case and has like my name, my discipline. Dude, I'm and has like the little so, um, Pyeongchang so logo. His first oh, Olympic ring, he went surfing with me and lost it. Yeah, in the so ocean. If, anyone no. lives in, if anyone lives in San Clemente, California, there's an Olympic ring in the rocks <laughs> it lowers. Oh my God. Not fun is finding tough. it. But you, got, you got some beach rats <laughs> yeah, swimming yeah, in the lowers right now. If you guys deep find diamond. it, and bring it back here. We'll do some crazy like parties. If you find it, you deserve to keep it. You can yeah. have it. Yeah, you're, <laughs> like, you had an Olympic dive. <laughs> yeah, I like, put it in my wetsuit. I get out of the water. I'm like, fuck. Oh, that go? sucks. Damn. They they replaced it, but there's oh, a that's good. That's 24 good. karat white gold diamond <laughs> Olympic ring somewhere in the water down in there. That's unreal. In the rocks. <laughs> how, how did it feel getting your ranch? That's like. What, yeah, was, I've always there? wanted to own my own ranch. So, like, I grew up on a ranch. I was sent away when I was little because I was getting in trouble doing stupid stuff. And I was kind of a little little shithead kid yeah. getting in a lot of trouble, sent away. And then, like, it was a punishment, and then it became something I loved, and I never wanted to leave. I like the culture. I like the camaraderie. I like the pride that you have in your work. And just the – what you learn out there is respect and honor and taking pride in your work and respecting other people. Like, I say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. No matter where I am, like, I'll her hold a door here in Orange County and say, yes, ma'am. And she'll turn back. I'm not that old. I'm like, all right, fuck you. <laughs> like, I'm just being respectful. Like, no, girls do that. You want me to be mean to you? I'm just being respectful. <laughs> like, Especially younger girls. They don't like being called ma'am. Yeah, well. When funny. you first got your You never know if it's a man or a girl nowadays. Yeah, I don't right. know the pronouns. We can definitely, get, yeah. We, yeah. We don't, I don't know if we want to get into five. that. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was going to say, when you first got your ranch, was it just you over there? or? Yeah, it's still just me. I run the ranch. Um, I do long-range shooting and engagement. I teach courses. Um, mm -hmm. I work with some SF guys, um, do some government contracting. I teach courses to the uh, SF snipers and some other snipers. And, and do you? Yeah. I was going to say, like, do you enjoy being alone? Yeah, I do. I really enjoy my own time and my peace. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm not... I get I hate cities like I get super stressed out like I've been to like four concerts my whole life as soon as I get there I'm, I want to fight someone like I'm like I hate one dude that's his main reason he doesn't want to go to a concert I can't that's so it. funny like, I just don't like being it's all in large sweaty crowds. Yeah. it's fucking. like on site <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's just one big rumble well, yeah. over here toward like one of the things we used to do with my friends it's not a don't do this this is not good, but Don't one of the things kids. we used to do with my friends is we would go to a bar, right, or yeah. a nightclub. We weren't allowed to leave the bar. We had to get kicked out of the bar or the nightclub. So <laughs> Wait, that's as, a fun challenge. That's actually crazy. So the, we weren't allowed to leave. No one was allowed to cognitively leave. They had to be dragged out. So we would say, all right, like, are you guys good to go? All right, we're, this is about time that we all want to leave. And we would just find the first person that we wanted to hit and just 
body. So that was your strat. Just yeah. sock someone. It just doesn't even matter. I'd find, like someone <laughs> will look at me funny. And they probably were just looking at me. I just bury him. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Poor guy. Dude. But yeah, I mean, he didn't even do anything. Or I'd, like, he would like grab a girl to go dance. Mike, he did that too aggressively. Wait, <laughs> like, no, no, no. Find the closest dude. Imagine, <laughs> imagine Kobe, clean fit on, tight jeans, sitting in the corner of the bar, risen up a nice girl, and then AJ Must just comes by and whacks <laughs> wow, him on the side. Of the well, did you ever get jumped by his friends after at all, or? Uh, no, because we always rolled pretty deep. Okay. Um, I think it was here in Saint Clement. I won't name in. the name of the bar. People tried to pay us to fight them after we kicked the shit out of them. Like we were at the bar, and my bu- one of my buddies looked across the bar. This big dude, he's like probably three hundred pounds. He gets up and goes, walks over to my buddy, and goes, "Hey, are we fighting? Or are we fucking? Why are you staring?" And then. <laughs> My best friend, my best friend was over in the corner talking to somebody. He just comes over my left shoulder and just rocks this dude. Wasn't even a part of this conversation. Had no idea what was going on. He just saw the body language, <laughs> rocks this dude. This dude falls to the ground on top of my buddy James. And I'm thinking like James is getting hit. My buddy James is getting hit. But he's actually just controlling the dude with his knee while giggling. Because this dude's just throwing haymakers. <laughs> and I go over and I fucking soccer kick him in the face. Just <laughs> knocks him clean out cold. And then I picked him up, dragged him out down the stairs, dragged him out, pushed him out, and I looked at the bouncers, I'm like, don't let him back in, and then I went back in. So this dude <laughs> didn't even start the fight, didn't even bother, wasn't even bothering anyone. We went off, and then we got them kicked out, and the bouncers thanked us when we started all of it. I was going to ask you, what if, when they don't kick you out, what do you do? You're going for the next person? Like, yeah, no, we just kept going. Like, <laughs> you know, oh, people yeah, out. Just There's keep like, going until we figure for, it like, out. The ultimate Seven bar fighting championship. Yeah. We just shit, keep going. Dude. We were in Quebec City, Canada, and we were at this nightclub. It's like four Not stories. Canadians, dude. <laughs> we, were, we were four stories. My buddy, uh, my buddy got into a fight. Got kicked out, went to the rent a car because we had a fight like thir- three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning next yeah. day. This so is all- Quebec, you said? Quebec. So we had all of our luggage in the car. <sighs> he goes back to the car, changes outfits, come back into the bar. So then it was a goal. How many oh, times can person. we get kicked out and get back in? We got in and out oh. 10 times before Bro. the bouncers figured it out. <laughs> you had 10 fits ready to come. Yeah, we just kept changing clothing <laughs> <laughs> because he would get kicked out. I'd be sitting in the car. I'm like, all right, screw this. I changed jackets, put a different hat on, different shirt, get you, back so in. So you knock 10 people out? They're probably all French too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a little French, French Canadian guy walking English. around. No, dude. In, in my head, I'm like, how are they not noticing the same passport 10 times? Like, how dumb are they? up right now. <laughs> so we were just going off. Like, <laughs> that's why they hate America. We just go over there and knock them out. Oh my <laughs> oh, shit. That was so good. But dude, uh, let's go back a little bit because you mentioned briefly. Oh, I just got I got in a coma. Mm-hmm. I mean, we should definitely get into that. How did you get in a coma? Yeah, so I had an event. I forget where it was, but I dislocated my shoulder. And Alexa, I think Alexa yeah. talked to us about this too. I dislocated my shoulder on a vent and tore both labrums completely in half. So I finished the event. They popped it back in. We taped it up and then I finished the event. Wow. And then that day I flew back from Europe and went straight to Vail up to Stedman Hawkins Clinic up in Vail. Shout out Stedman Hawkins. They've put me together. Stephen Hawkins? Stephen Hawkins? No. <laughs> he was too busy on Epstein's Island. He was a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> he was busy watching midgets uh, fix uh, math problems. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but. Yeah. <laughs> they probably just duct taped R2-D2 to a jet ski and took him out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, oh my dude. Goodness. Yeah, that's that's a whole other thing. We can we can get into that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Steven. Toy, toy your. Toy the labrums. Yes. Went, flew back, got emergency surgery the next day. They repaired my shoulder, but I was at like 8,000, 9,000 feet above sea level where I was sleeping. And I went into something called high altitude post-operative pulmonary edema. Long story. How do you even remember that? <laughs> uh, just, well, it killed me. So I think I was <laughs> kind of has to remember. <laughs> Dude, what? So like long story short with that is what it means is I had a post formative of valley. So I had a hole in my heart. They don't know how it was there. They don't know if I had it from birth or they burned the hole in my heart. But I started shunting in my sleep. So... I was on Oxycod and Oxycodone, which was prescribed. I don't like pharmaceutical pills. They scare the shit out of me. I don't like big pharma. I don't like pills. Not my thing because I have a very addictive personality. And I know that if I started taking a lot of them, I would get addicted to it. But I had to take them for the pain. So I get, they gave all the medication to my mother to dose me as I need be. Mm. But because of my size and my pain tolerance, and then I guess I ha- me and my sister both have a high tolerance for opioids where we metabolize them really fast. I was on the most medically allowed um, medication coming out of the hospital. It like tranquilized a horse. Like Jeez. the entire right side of my body was completely numb. 
I get back and I think like the next day, so this is all was told me because I don't remember anything. Like three months of my life is just, I don't even remember any of it. That's must um, be scary. They, they were having like a party at the house. How was that? Like just a bunch of older people having like a wine and dine thing. And I'm downstairs sleeping and my mom like somehow was like, hey, like I'm going to go check on AG. Like something doesn't feel right. And she came downstairs and I was, re- eyes rolling the back of the head, nonverbal, non-compliant, oh, just God. fucking out. Um, so Crazy what ha- her instinct was just like. Some yeah, I mean, a mother's mom, instinct is yeah. something that I don't think can be explained. Like, yeah. I'm not a hu- overly religious person, but I do believe that there is something out Definitely there that God, was like, bro. you need like an instinct. You need to go check on your son. Yeah. Um, she came downstairs, non-responsive. The EMT showed up, and I guess the EMTs at 19 years old have to assume them overdosing because I showed signs of overdose and I shined, showed symptoms of overdose. So their protocol is, okay, it's a 19-year-old kid, symptoms of overdosing. He's overdosing. So they gave me something to aspirate or to puke. To puke all the pills out, mm. I aspirated, which means it filled up my lung and popped my lung. Oh, God. So my lung is now popped. I get instantaneous pneumonia, and I'm at 36% oxygen. Like, my respiratory Wait, system's already shut pop, are you, are you bleeding or no? No, it's just, like, fluids coming out. It was, it was only one of my lungs. Not both lungs popped. So, like, pop a hole in my lung. So then they throw me in an ambulance, bring me to, um, what was it, Summit County Medical I'm at the hospital, and they don't know of a PFO, so it was like an umbrella. They would fix one thing, like pull this string, and then this side would collapse. Oh, then God. this side would collapse. Like, they couldn't stabilize me. They just weren't – they didn't have the resources to stabilize me. And have you guys ever been to Colorado? Yeah. The weather's no. not the most consistent thing in the world. Mm-hmm. So a helicopter lands to pick me up, to take me down to Denver. Weather rolls in. Helicopters can't take off. Oh, God. So then they have to throw me in an ambulance, which is like a special ambulance, a mobile ER. It's like on hydraulics. So then they throw me in this ambulance. They're driving me down to Denver. But on the way down to Denver on I-70, there's one tunnel to get down to Denver. It's closed. Oh, my God. So then we're escorted by police. They open the tunnel. I get down through there. And I guess in the ambulance is when I flatlined. So I died. And I was at like 36% oxygen, which then causes brain damage. And I'm not like my brain shutting down, my organs, everything's shutting down slowly to try to keep me alive. Um, we get down to Denver. They medically induce me into a coma. And then from there, they were able to stabilize me. And then I think I woke up like three, four weeks later. Oh, my God. Is when they woke me up. And then I'm such a terrorist (laughs) in some some aspects. (laughs) When they woke me, they were supposed to wake me up at 8 or or 9 o'clock in the morning. I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I tortured this nurse. Like, I pretended to cough, pretended to, like, pretended to cough, pretended like I was choking. And I, like, she, she, I scared her. I I bought her flowers and, like, felt bad and, like, gave her flowers. instantly? (laughs) Because I didn't know what was going on. He woke up on demon time. No one was telling me what was going on. He woke up at 4 a.m. Yeah. Like, imagine all... The last thing you remember is eating a Wendy's salad, and then all of a sudden you wake God. up in an emergency center with a tube down your throat and machines keeping you alive. That's like crazy. I had no idea what was going on. Did so, you have a sense of time at all? No, I know. No, Did you think off, it was dude. like just one second later? In your you head? probably thought it was during I, the day on the day that it I just happened, had no right? idea about anything. Yeah. The only thing uh, I felt was amazing because I had the best sleep of my life. Like, <laughs> wow, uninterrupted sleep, man. Like that's yeah. so rare yeah, to come yeah, by. Yeah. I felt amazing, <laughs> but I woke up and I'm like, all right, well, where am I? What's yeah. going on? They, they think I'm brain dead because I was supposed to be brain dead because I, my ox- I wasn't getting oxygen, so my brain started shutting down. Probably scared the nurse too, huh? Yeah, so she <laughs> walks over to the bed to check on me after I pretend to choke. She starts pumping all the fluid out of my lungs, and I grabbed her arm. I got her close <laughs> enough that I could grab her arm. She's like, hey, baby. She was like pulling the pulling the, the fluid out of my, my throat, and I started like turning my head to bring her in close, and I grabbed her arm, and I wouldn't let go until she gave me a piece of paper to write, Mom. Because I wanted to see my mom because I had no uh, idea what was going on. She was the last recollection of the someone that was around me. So, yeah, I tormented her for like five hours until my mom showed up. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, my, oh my god! I didn't dude. let her sleep an ounce. <laughs> how dude, did that your, shit's scary, though. How did your mom feel and your 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 sister and your, your whole family? Alexa didn't know. So they didn't tell oh. my sister. They, for like a month, I guess, they were just like, Oh yeah, your brother's super busy. Like he's <laughs> he's doing stuff. He can't get on the phone. What? But I'm 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 on a yeah, life. Yeah. I'm on life support. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I guess oh. it's like good if you're like young for like your emotions and stuff. But like, a, oh, that's crazy. To me, like I don't care at all. Like yeah. it doesn't bother me. I feel bad for my parents. My mother, who was there yeah. watching all this, she like, had to go through. I it. think the worst thing in the world is to lose a child. So yeah. like, pretty much being told that like, yeah, your child's alive, but. We don't know if he'll ever wake up. We don't know when he wakes up, what he's going to be like. Worst thing she could hear. Yeah. And then I woke up and... 
Thank God. I woke up and then I walked. When I came out of a coma, I walked myself out of the hospital two days later. Dang. Like, I, they're like, hey, they gave me a goal. There's like this breathing respiratory thing. If I could blow enough air into it and suck enough air in there, let me leave. So like my only goal was practicing on this thing, get enough air. I'm like, I'm getting out of here in two days, three days. Like, I'm not staying here. They bring it. They bring a, um, they bring a wheelchair. I'm like, fuck you. I'm walking out. <laughs> like, there's no, I, I came in here flat. I'm walking out upright. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not taking a wheelchair out of here. And at that point you knew kind of what happened to you. Yeah. I, well, I was told, but I couldn't read, write or speak. Uh, like I had to relearn how to read, write and speak again. I still, I read and write like a fourth grade level, man. Like I'm able to talk and like speak well, but when I get really tired, I start to mumble because I still have brain damage, my left front lobe. So my left front lobe brain damage is the reason why I don't have empathy or sympathy. Like I don't have these social cues that a lot of people generally have. So I went to like sports psychologists and psychologists to understand the emotion, but I don't have it. Mm. So I'm able to like express emotions yeah. and show empathy and sympathy, but I don't physically feel it. You don't feel it inside. No. Like, How quickly did you pick it up though? The like, spelling, it came mm -hmm. back, I think, or reading came, or what do you think, Alexa? My, my, my yeah, and came it back came back first. probably about four or five months. Okay. And a little bit of reading. Yeah. Really yeah. And it doesn't help that I was dyslexic growing up. Like it was just a perfect <laughs> yeah. storm. Wow. Did all, did all of that kind of motivate you to just kick ass with whatever you did next? Yeah. Because they told me I'll never snowboard again. Mm -hmm. And I don't do well to people tell me I can't do something. Put a fire under your butt. Yeah. I'm like, I'm coming back. I'm competing. And then. I think I got back on a snowboard a month and a half later after my coma. Didn't you go really? to the Olympics after this uh -huh. incident? Yeah. Yeah. So the season after my Olympics, I did the <clears throat> North American tour and I won 14 out of the 16 wow. races and I podiumed at um, 15 of them. So I was first in all of them, second in one, the other one I was disqualified. And you were cleared medically for like all that stuff too mm -hmm. immediately after Yeah, that? they did a stress test. So I like went on a treadmill and ran and they... Make sure that my respiratory system was good. They did a bubble study to try to push a bubble through the hole in my heart. Uh, and they how just, the heck do you do that? They I put just... a tube down me, and they go through my, uh, so I don't know. Esophagus? They call it the So you have maker. a hole in your heart? Yeah, technically, yeah. Wow. So I, I, think... just, I can't do any, like, not that I do it, but I have to stay away from opioids and methamphetamines. They'll yeah. kill me. Hey, guys. Yes, I'm on a private jet. And none of this would be possible without our sponsor, Zill Media. If you need any social media or any content done or even start a podcast like ours, they are the best in the business. Go to zillmedia.com and mention Basement Talk for a discount on their services. Now let's get back to the episode. But let's get off this fake jet. <laughs> <laughs> Go get back to the episode. And do you, you still don't know whether that was like a birth yeah, thing? Or so I guess like... PFOs, most pe a lot of people have them. They just never know because when you're a baby, you, your your heart's open. Yeah, because your mother is the one giving you blood and breathing mm -hmm. for you. David then, Goggins had one too, I think. Yeah, and then they can either if they find it, they can put a clamshell to shut it, or your body just has this really strong flap that closes it. Uh. So as long as I don't slow down my respiratory system too much, or like take amphetamines, it'll <laughs> stay closed. Pretty, it stay it has stayed closed. I haven't had a problem since. Just no meth. Yeah, no meth. <laughs> no meth. <laughs> Man, that is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. Like, I don't even know what to say. I think it shaped me. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's stuff that happens in your life that makes you who you are today. Yeah. yeah. And do you think that you would be where you are today without that type of experience happening to you? Mm -hmm. Or would you be? A I'd like to think so. Yeah. Um, just because of my personality, but I think it shaped me for sure because mm -hmm. it changed my outlook on life. Like, I want to lay in my deathbed one day and say I shouldn't have done that, then I should have done that. Yeah. Like, I, oh, I do. I try everything. I do everything. And I just don't want to have any regrets. And, like, to this point right now, I have zero regrets in my life. Through my failures, through my mistakes, through my successes, I wouldn't change a fucking thing. That's awesome. And you were 19 when that happened, right? Uh, 18, 19, somewhere in there. And you're... Oh, 29 now. 29 yeah. now. So yeah. that was almost... A decade ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Crazy. And now you're racing Lamborghinis, yeah. right? Thriving. Jeez. So Thriving. you went from snowboarding, yeah. competing there to Lamborghini. What was the transition you like? You started exactly. as a drifting car. Yeah, I drove Formula D. Oh, Formula wow. Drift for, for Hyundai. a little bit. No, I was in my own car, my own chassis. I was oh, no driving way. my BMW. I still have it. It's actually up at Willow Springs. Oh, that's um, I just, I can't sit behind a desk, man. Like you couldn't put me in a corporate world. One, I'm going to offend too many people. And two, I'm very mind driven and I don't care about hurting feelings to get a task done. Like I'm, I'm set to make a task 
I want to get that task done. And I was like, all right, well, what's next? I'm like, oh, well, I'm a guy who doesn't love racing cars. Who doesn't love cars? As an A-dominant male, everyone loves cars. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Let's try this racing thing. I started drifting for fun, went and competed in Formula D for a year, had a podium in Formula D and Pro 2. And then my manager at the time was like, hey, have you ever thought about doing sports cars? I was like, yeah, I mean, I thought about it, but I never really had the money to do it because it's a lot of money to get into it. Yeah. And Formula D is a very social media based sport. Like it is racing, but the partnerships and sponsors come from your social media presence. How much product can you sell? The fan base is a lower income fan base. So it's like, how do I sell intercoolers? How do I sell mm -hmm. wheels? That's mm -hmm. what there is. They're not investing money to develop cars. So I was like, all right, well, I'll try this IMSA thing. I went over to Daytona. I, I, uh, tested at the Roar, which is the event before the Daytona 24. Got an opportunity to get in a car. Um, had a small deal with Hyundai and started driving for Hyundai. And I was there for about three years. And last year, the budget budget cuts came. And they kept like four of the factory guys and dropped everyone else. And then I led into driving Lamborghinis for a Lamborghini team, which was a next step in my career that I wanted to take anyway. And it was like getting cut was a blessing in disguise because awesome. now I'm in a place that I actually want to be. Is yeah. that car called a super trofeo? Mm -hmm. That's I've, I've been like a fan of that car like my whole life. That's yeah, it's, crazy. It's a monster. I mean, it's <clears throat> how big are those paddle shifters? They're like this, right? Uh, about the size of the mic, just thinner. It's crazy. Yes, because the Lamborghini Super Trofeo is based off the STO. They click, click, click. It's yeah. just unbelievable. So the I've closest actually street on. car to it would be the STO. Okay. Do you have a dream car? Or if you were to pick three cars. <laughs> to have in my garage. In your garage. Uh, a McLaren F1. Because okay. I just like McLarens. A McLaren, an older McLaren F1. Um, a Porsche GT3 RS. Okay. And then my dually. I love driving trucks. I drive yep. a big old dually. Um, nice. There's some stuff I want to do it. I want to put it on 42s. Put um, like Matt V wheels Matt on v. it for the, it's a military truck. Oh shit! Like I just want this massive, massive truck. How does how does like in your like competitions? How do you compete against like those RSRs? So in, with Super Trofeo, are they in the it, same league? No. So oh. Super Trofeo is a is a we only race other Super Trofeos in the series. Okay. So it's all the Super Trofeos against each other. Um, the next step in my career is GT3. So the GT3 cars are the Astons, the McLarens, the Porsches, the Ferraris, and how they all compete is a thing called BOP balance performance. So the series themselves say like, okay, the RSR has been too good for two races. So they're going to take a little power out, add more weight, and they're always trying to find that fine line of power to weight to make all the cars competitive. Because like, if they just took the gloves off, it would turn into Formula One, like a not economically sustainable sport. The I mean, fastest, you just, biggest car, or whatever. You just yeah. whoever in racing, whoever spends the most money wins, and that's even in like single make production that's vehicles, facts. like. Mm -hmm. There's a team that we compete against called Wayne Taylor Racing. They have a massive budget, and we've caught up to them, but they spend more time. They have nine to ten full-time mechanics. They're working on the cars all the time. They're bringing them to the wind tunnels, and it's just hard to compete with a team that's always working on the car where I'm with a team that's super awesome, super great. They're the best team I ever worked with. The owner is a huge like philanthropic guy, huge charity guy. Awesome. He builds relationships with drivers and if you have a good relationship with them you stay around longer he's not results to him isn't everything it's the camaraderie with the team it's how you interact with the team how you treat your mechanics like how do you train are you doing like karting go-karts no i train on a simulator okay. like i have a sim at the oh, house no way. Super yeah. sure. right, how accurate that. is it it's pretty accurate it's accurate to an extent like if you're really fast on a sim you can be decent in a car that what i use it for is like just track familiarity so understanding where the track goes, like vision cues. But what's like your, the what is, what's your favorite track? Have you been to Thermal? I have. Okay. I've How been to Thermal. It? It's okay. It's really dirty. Um, it's a dirty track. There's a lot of dust and debris. My favorite track to drive so far has been Watkins Glen. Okay. Watkins Glen is a really... I'm, I've had my best results there, and I just really like the track. Laguna Seca is awesome. Mm -hmm. I race in Laguna Seca in March. Nice. How does it feel like winning in the race? Was that crazy when you were winning? Because I saw some some races you won for Lamborghini. How did that feel? Yeah, it was cool. My first ever race in a Lambo, I won. Dang. That's wow. amazing. Yeah, in my class. 
It must have been hype. Well, yeah, it probably makes your team hype. Too. Yeah, I was <laughs> stoked. First I mean, race. I was still driving for Hyundai, so I had like a Hyundai suit, a Hyundai sponsored <laughs> oh, no. like Lamborghini made me take it off and like not be branded by another manufacturer. Oh thing. my god! And like we weren't supposed to win. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I'm gonna shift this a little bit yeah. from the racing. I mean, I want to get into some stuff because you obviously have strong opinions on certain things. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Andrew Tate? Uh he's okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't agree with all his views, but I agree with a lot of his views. Yeah. I think that if he if he helps some a younger man find his path, and that's great. Um, I don't want to get canceled here. I know, yeah. But like, dude, the <laughs> economic and standpoint and just people's views in this country are, are disgusting to me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm a huge patriot. I'm a huge American. I've traveled around the world. I've been to Russia. I've been to Bulgaria. I've been to Turkey. Korea, well, Korea is beautiful. It's a great place, but people don't understand the luxuries we have as Americans. Like, we can wake up and I'm like three o'clock in the morning, dude. I'm starving. I need a drink. I can go to Seven Eleven. I can't do that over in Europe. I can't do that in Russia. It's just people need to be more thankful for what we have here in this country. People and, don't understand the amount of freedom we have. Yeah, we have a lot of freedom in this country. Um, our politicians are the problem. It's not our people. It's the, dividing us. It, they're dividing us. Our country needs to come together and be united. I don't. I hate our government, uh, but I love our people. Mm-hmm. I love the American people most. Not everything, but the American people just need. To, we're in hard times with soft men, if that makes sense. And that's not. And a they're dig. and they're contributing to that in many different ways. Yeah, and I that's believe. not a dig at women. I'm a huge supporter in women doing whatever they can, but. Like, it, it sounds bad, but through history, it takes strong men to make a difference. And we're coming out of a soft time, which creates soft men. So hopefully and this hard, hard time times. can yeah. do the opposite. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Andrew Tate, he's, he's, everyone, there's a lot of people that bag on him, but, I mean, he definitely has some good points, and, you know, I can completely agree with that. But I think he's leveled out, too, over the past, like, year. He's way more calm now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's more mellow. He was, like, I all think, over yeah. my phone for, like, a couple months he had now. A it's image. Like he's a up. character. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, he's building his brand. And yeah. He's gonna, he had to get where he is now by doing something. Yeah. And he's going to tailor to the dem- demographic that's that's following him. 100%. He's going to tailor to that demographic that's going to make him the most money at the end of the day. The problem is, man. though, like so many people take everything they look at on social media, just speaking away from that, too. So literally, if you say one thing, they're going to be like, it's oh that face God, value. Like, exactly. Yeah. It's it's crazy. And people I've seen are so that. sensitive. Like yeah. What happened to jokes or messing around? Like, yes. I haven't. When's the last time you seen a good comedy movie come out? That Bro, that is so actually true. So it's a bad question for me because I don't watch. No, no movies. there's That's no true. Step there's Brothers none. coming out anymore. No, like no. nothing. There's like, like I'm, I'm excited to see Ted Three to see how far they push it. No, I bet. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. I bet you what happened with Toy Story? It's, it's it's gonna gonna be be good nights, movies like this. Yeah. Like, it would never be accepted in today's culture. And it's just first your comedy. Happy Gilmore. It's joking. And half these people get it. Half of these half of these people that get us insulted in front of people, they do it behind closed doors. Like I take me at face value. I will always give you exactly who I am. Never ask me a question you don't want to know my honest opinion about because I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. And it doesn't mean I'm right. Just yeah. because it's the way I view things doesn't mean I'm right. But that's the way I view things. And it doesn't mean I'm like me and you can have the biggest disagreement. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna fault you for it. We have a disagreement. We think about some something a little differently, but I don't think you're a bad person because of it. I just you have no that's empathy. your views. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Per se, but like that's just your view. I'm yeah. not yeah. gonna tell you you're wrong. Of course. I might think you're wrong, 100%. but that's your view. That's your life. That's what the experiences that you went through that brought you to have that opinion on something. Yeah. People doesn't are just so wrong. slow to like understand and respect each other's opinions and stuff. Yeah. Even if you don't agree, you can respect. It. And that leads back to what makes America so great. Yeah. Is the fact that you can have different opinions and still coexist and have that freedom to yeah. speak. In well, Russia, you can't have another opinion. You go to prison. Like you just don't have not, that luxury. I know. And I love the people who say, like, I'm going to leave America if this happens. I'm going to, like, go. Go see That's how That's what you I like say it. too. I'm like, see have fun. Fucking who says later. that? We, we don't, don't want you here, like, yeah, straight people, up. People, who says that? No, people, I hear people say that. No way. Yeah. Oh, if, yeah. They, if somebody gets voted but for, but you don't know how good passed. you have it until you no. go, until well, you leave. He, grass is always greener on the other side. Yep. But then you realize you got a bigger lawn to mow. And <laughs> yeah. Kobe's lived everywhere. You know. I've lived a bunch of places and I know it's true. I've lived in the weirdest, craziest little cities in the world, like all over Europe. And there's nothing that I'd want more to even just be able to like 
walk to a Walmart or a tar- exactly. just luxury, Target, just Target or go to a, like go to a gas station or just go do something like that's totally normal. Where yeah, you can go to a gas station anywhere around here in the United States, and you can pick up a pack of gum, you can pick up a beer, you can pick up a water, you can pick up. Like, they have, like, toothbrushes. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, anything you need is, yeah. like, right there. I lived in a small village in Austria for four years. And, like, if what? I didn't go grocery shopping Friday evening or Saturday morning, I didn't eat till Monday. We'll yeah. Lot, it's what just a, closed. It's closed. What part of Austria was it? It's closed. It's oh just closed. Oh, my God. What part of Austria was it? I was in the Corinthian Valley, so uh, Kvilach, oh, okay. which is the Slovenian-Italian border. And then yeah. I lived in um, Ramsau and Dachstein. And then I lived in Dachau. In Super Germany, cool. I was all over the yeah, place. Yeah, I'm Austrian. My was, grandparents are from Austria. Yeah. What was one of your craziest stories living in that that area? How's the schnitzel? Yeah, the Wiener Fire. schnitzel. Really <laughs> good. I like Toronto Ghost, though. You yeah, say, yeah, how's about, the schnitzel? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, dude. Schnitzel. Like, it's, it's, it's actually, this it's guy called, loves sausage <laughs> over here, dude. Well, yeah. I like broper stuff. Uh, Wiener, yeah, sh- Wiener schnitzel would be like a thin chicken cutlet. Yeah. They take pork or chicken. Oh, it's like veal, veal yeah. shit like that. Why yeah. Yeah. These guys like don't that. know. You got, you got good goulash, all spetzle, weird, all that yeah. stuff. Hey, dude. The chill. German language is a little different. Yeah, yeah. The what? The German language, it's very abrupt. Like, like ich liebe dich doesn't what? sound pretty, dich. right? That's yeah. I love you. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And I can Sounds say like you something. Just insulted me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like if my girlfriend at the time was Austrian, she says "Ich liebe dich." I would say "Ich dich auch" back to her, which is "Love you too." Like it's not a pretty language yeah. per se. My yeah. my grandparents they they've been in this country for like sixty five years, but they still have their accent super hard. And when they argue, when I was growing up, they would go in between English and German. And in English, they sounded fine, but when they were in German, it sounded like cursing and yeah, everything aggressive. Yeah. It's super funny. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's awesome though. But like my like you were saying to your point earlier, my grandparents didn't live in this country. They lived in Europe during World War II. They had to fight to get here. So yeah, and it's. Take I what think you can my get. craziest story living there is actually in Bulgaria. My friend got kidnapped. No way. Yeah, he got held By for who? ransom. What happened? Bulgarian mafia. What did he do? He went to a gentleman's club, which we were told like not to go to. Oh, okay. And he, we were all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He went, yeah. we, went yeah. straight in. we were all at the we were all at the bar after an event, and he went, he decided. We <laughs> 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 can make it out. <laughs> yeah. We were we we're at a bar, and like we get a phone call from this random number from or from his phone saying, "Hey, we have your friend. You need to pay us fifteen hundred dollars, or you're not getting him back." Oh my God. So we had to go, like, none of us had mo- that much cash on us. We had to go to the ATM. We we're all pulling out money to go pay off these guys to get them back. Wow. They took his passport. They wouldn't release him. Holy. Yeah. Fuck. So we had to go get cash and oh go get the money God. to go get them back. In that moment, were you guys freaking out or just like kind of laughing? Were. Too? I'm like, it's his fault. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was about to tell you, man. It's like, like, let's get the you money. Made this was he American? Yeah. No, oh. he was Swiss. Oh, he was Swiss. I was like, you made this decision. You're living with this. Like, <laughs> I'll get you the cash and I'll hand it to him. And if they don't bring you out, I'm out. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not walking in that establishment. I'm not going in there. Like, this is your oh problem, God. buddy. Holy that's hilarious. 1500 out there is probably, that's a lot of money. For, in Bulgaria, like, yeah. yeah. How much is that, like, here, like, compared? I don't I don't know what the currency uh, difference is there. No idea. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Are they on the uh, Euro, Euro? I don't know they are. Bulgaria. I don't know if Bulgaria is on the Euro. I can mm. look it up. I mean, it's not a like... It's not that many euros per se, like the exchange rate, like the euro is definitely stronger than the American dollar at the mm-hmm. moment. But I mean, I made him pay me back. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're also a, you're also shoot a lot of guns, right? Yeah, I shoot a lot. I shoot probably four or five times. I've a never week. shot a gun. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Dang. Oh, oh my gosh. 800 bucks. Yeah. Well, yeah, Kyler's never shot a I've gun. I've never shot a gun, dude. It's pretty fucked. Yeah, I shoot a lot. I, I want to hunt so bad. Yeah, Kobe does hunt too. So bad. What, I mean, yeah. Do you have any experience hunting and what would be like an entry level hunting, like the boars in Texas? Yeah, what that's would, that simple. I've hunted elk, mule deer, antelope. How long would it take to, yeah. like, do, do, does it just depend? You I know there's a, a process for the patients. license, especially for the elk hunting. You um, have to in book Colorado, years out. you get your, uh, what is it called, hunter safety, and then you apply for a tag. And then you go get the tag and you go you go hunt. Is it, sorry, is it true you can get in a helicopter and machine gun a bunch of boars? In Texas, yeah. And they pay you. <laughs> so that's like, to me, whoever started doing that, it's like the perfect business. Oh, yeah. Because Dude, it's like, great. people go pay to shoot these machine guns out of helicopters at boars, and then the ranchers pay the guys to get rid of the boars. So they're making bun- money on both ends. Oh, it's just coming right Can we right go back. do that? And anybody yeah. with the pair of balls is going to want to go shoot a machine gun on a helicopter. Like, there's yeah. no way. There's this group of guys that, like, outfitted a uh, Jeep. 
And they have like a 240 Bravo, a 50 <laughs> cal, a minigun, and they go at night and just roast, side roast these hogs because oh they're a gosh. huge nuisance. They they cause millions of dollars of yeah. damage a year in Texas. Do you think a hundred meat eaters can beat up a hundred plant based eaters like in a war? I think like ten meat eaters can beat up a hundred <laughs> vegans. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, Kyler's a vegan. Yeah, I'm vegan. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like, like I'm um, not gonna hurt you. I've never trusted a vegan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't trust someone I can't eat meat. I know, dude, I, we 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 had a uh, we had actually one of the guys. He made the. Have you seen the Game Changers? Mm -hmm. We yeah, had him yeah. on James our podcast. James on. Okay. We had on yeah. the podcast. What do you think about his uh, his show there? I'd never watched it. Oh, you never <laughs> watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally getting canceled after this. No, fine. You're good. Dude, hey, it's fine. That, that we we want to get canceled. That is too. one it's vegan fine. that could beat up some meat eaters, though. Dude, Wilkes. put this on Rumble. Uh, I will but say, Kenny? though. What? what? But Kenny? <laughs> the what? Wait, what? I said James Wilkes is the one vegan that can beat up a meat eater. He said, but can he? <laughs> Maybe not after not a, a hefty T bone. Not you just like, slip him some meat the day before the event. His stomach's all messed up. And you <laughs> Yo! Shit the whole time. Some meat. A fair fight's not a fight I want to be in. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> a oh fair fight could be a losing fight. I'm trying to tip the scales. He's trying to sideswipe some guys in Quebec, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's going to knock someone out of the bar just to leave. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the toughest dude. I didn't pick dudes bigger than me. Yeah. yeah, I found the 150 pound Quebec and just rocked him. <laughs> he wanted, him, he yeah. wanted to get kicked out. Yeah. He wanted to get kicked out. That's the game. He's I, not gonna make the game he's a any winner. harder. He won the game. Yeah, he won the game. Won. <laughs> That's all that matters. I, w I will say though, uh, for us at least, we do. We don't give a shit whatever we say on here. I mean, we no. don't have any sponsors yet too. Yeah. So like. Dude, whatever we say, we really genuinely mean it. We don't yeah. care about it. And the, it's all us, bro. Our I hope we don't opinions. get canceled. But and like, also, I want to say this too. If you guys are watching, and I don't know, by the time this episode releases, we might have a sponsor. If you guys are watching this or if our sponsors are watching this, we don't care either. Like, if you guys want to sponsor us for who we are. Now we're really not going to get one. <laughs> yeah. <All right>. No, <laughs> Come I our way. Like, no, if you fast. want us to say what you guys want us to say, we're not going to do that. Money's we're gonna not going to make us change our we're, minds. We're literally in the basement right now, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, this, uh, is, this, is, this is what we are. In so. racing, I have to mold the structure a bit. Like, no, I wear a sure. black shirt tucked in, black slacks. Like, I respect the culture and mm -hmm. I will abide by what they ask of me. Um, I'll keep my opinions to myself and not always is it smart to just voice exactly what you're thinking but like I joke around and make fun of vegans but like mm -hmm. that's their path I don't think anything yeah, yeah. less of them no. it's just what they're doing it's just people are too sensitive just like, means you love your steak man yeah <laughs> exactly I'm a red-blooded meat-eating American like that's sure. just who I am <laughs> it doesn't mean that vegans are wrong which they are but it's just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Not bad people. I have a joke about that. We'll say off air. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say though. Uh, I know you're in a relationship, but yeah. what do you think about all this OnlyFans stuff these days? And I could personally never date an OnlyFans model. I was gonna ask you if, if, and we can all yeah, talk yeah. about this. If she's a ten, but she had an OnlyFans in the past, are you dating her? No, because I couldn't do that to my child. Words right That's out of my fair. mouth. I, this is where I stand on that. But I'm gonna take hindsight statement. is 2020. If I was a girl, I'd be showing my beef every chance I get. Like, <laughs> I, like whatever, man. If, if some dude's willing to pay me a hundred dollars for my toes, he can have my toes. Like, I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't fault them. Dude. We're gonna put AJ on Feet Finder when we're yeah. done. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we're pause, pause, pause. pause. Wait. Chill, chill, chill. Do you guys know what Feet Finder is? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, see, I don't. What? Yeah, yeah. I'm not just hopped just in. Where's your feet? People buy pictures. No, I didn't know if Kobe's on there. Like. What's going on? No, I'm not. Wants to take of my of my wait, wait. wait I have could a, I, could dude, I post my foot and make money? Like, yeah, online, yeah, right? you could. My foot, my toes are broken though, so I wouldn't probably make bank unless like the chicks are into that. Yo, no, it's crazy. dudes that are buying your feet. Oh, it is. No, it's girls. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what creepy wants to see dudes. your fucking toe, bro? Hey, man, you never know, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Like, Kyler's got his toe. Like, Kyler's got his toe suck, not me. What the fuck? Whoa, <laughs> Kyler, yeah, bro. Nah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Kyler, <laughs> Kyler, <what? laughs> foot muncher or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, not me. <laughs> I didn't ask for it. Let's just say that. <laughs> I didn't ask for it. <laughs> Get that, that tongue between my toes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you even approach that subject? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even... Yo, just she, hot she just did it. Kyler walks up to his girl. Yo, can I see your foot? He's on his back <laughs> and she's he's just putting her toe in his face. Like I just my foot got grabbed and next thing I know it's in in, it's in someone's mouth. You know, get <laughs> 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 her feet to herself, Kyler. I don't yeah. want to get into that. I did not what would you do if like 
It was like, I think I've said, I forget. I've said this on some pod. I forget with mm-hmm. who. You guys can like remember yeah, when yeah. I well, said this. Well, while you remember, can no, a guy have a girl, okay, yeah. What, yeah, can yeah, a guy yeah. have a girl best friend, dude? No. Let's, I mean, Zach, you want to go first? What do you think, man? Dude, what? Because he was what? on the other side of this. Well, yeah, and I still have, fr- I don't think that it's they're a like. a very controversial topic listen, on Basement I don't, Talk. I don't, I don't have I mean, any. I'm, here, I'm curious I don't have any girl, <laughs> yeah. I don't have any girl best friends. I have a few homegirls. What does that mean? Well, I mean, <laughs> can, an Eskimo can brother? a woman have guy friends? Yeah, but like my girl can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, what? Yeah, dude. But it, I'm what? not saying that a guy can have he a girl said, best can friend a girl either. Have a best friend? I used to be on the other side. Girl. Not your girl? Wait, wait, wait. No, wait. not my girl. Get, fill me in. Sorry, I was like lost in this for a sec. Fill I me said on. flip the roles. Okay. If Can a girl have guy friends? Hmm. Can a girl have guy friends? My, Is she dating someone? And Zach someone? said, not if it's my girl. Yeah, dating if, someone if or she, not? I, it's so, like, my girlfriend. Lower, what do we, do we mean? Like, it's a, it's like a red flag. If you meet Alexa? a girl and she says, oh, this is one of my best friends and she shows you a guy, that's an automatic, like, Yeah, they pipes. Yeah. Or he has the agenda, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, dude. Did she oh, you unplugged gonna... the mic. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> to me, like, and this is my opinion, and I could be very wrong about it, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A guy that's good friends no. with an attractive girl has an agenda. Whether he admits it or not, he does. Yeah. I ex- no, I don't. What the fuck? I completely <laughs> But I actually, agree. I, heard, I, heard, I heard something on Instagram. This is like to go on your side of it. I, I, I forgot who said it, but I heard it on Instagram. They said, if a guy doesn't have an intention with his girl best friend... What? Oh no! I nah, can't. Zach, be I real, not, bro. Like, like I might, off camera shit. For okay, real? I might like, not be able to no, say for this because like, I don't care. I don't care about like weight or anything like that. Like that. Like every girl is beautiful. Dude, wait, you, wait, you, wait, you, wait, 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 a guy and a girl could truly just be best friends, then why are no girl best friends overweight? Uh, <laughs> I heard facts. that. And it kind of resonated with me just a little bit because I don't know any. It there might be out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> it might I mean, be out I, there. I don't know what it is. I can't hang out with ugly people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just don't want to have a conversation with them. Like, oh I don't know what it is. I'm getting canceled. <laughs> But like that just, was a hot take. They're just not. In, they're just not interesting. It's not cool like that. So they're not up. interesting, huh? They're just not like just good like, to look at. No, Whoa. it's not even that. They're just like they don't have the same life experiences. That's that facts, bro. It's, it's like that weird ass. Stuff. It's like those ugly ass kids they don't in have school. The same life experiences. Nah. They haven't yeah. been pretty. They don't know what it's like. <laughs> I mean, everyone's pretty in their own way, I guess. But yeah, like, just yeah. Not in my Shut up, I love you. What if like you were like long ass day at work, like. You're super tired and you get home and then your wife or your girlfriend's like all pissed off. Like, baby, you forgot to make me dinner. Like, what are you doing? That's a woman's job. It's not my job. Okay. That's fact, bro. That's what I, that's like what, that's what like, I feel like. The girl and it's not belittling women by any means. It's just like my eyes raised old school. Like I take care of my family. I take care of the house, paying the bills. And I treat my wife or my woman right now like she's a queen. She's everything to me. She's my world. Like. It goes uh, to me. It's like God, family, and then like what I'm doing. But like, she is everything to me. But God comes first. Do you um, guys go on like hunting dates and stuff? She is a little bit different than I am. She likes shopping. She's a she's a white girl. She likes what to yeah, do her yeah. things, and that's what she likes to do. And if that's what she likes that's to do. Cool. She's not she's not not outdoorsy. But like, if I'm gonna go hunting for two weeks, I'm going hunting with the boys. Like I, I'm, I'm going to be in the bush. I'm going to be dirty. I'm going to be stinky. I'm not going to shower for a week. Like I don't want to have to deal with all the nonsense. Yeah. And that's not, that's like, that's just like her prerogative and I support her in what she does. And like, I want her to have her own dreams, her own aspirations. I want to stand next to her, not in front of her, not behind her. I just want to support her that's and awesome. help her in anything that I can. And if her dream and her goal is to be a strong, independent businesswoman, then I'm going to support her in that. But like, I ain't coming home and cooking. <laughs> it's not happening. Guess we're door dashing. Yeah. <laughs> Bar- barbecue, maybe? Huh? Maybe throw out steak on okay, the barbecue. Yeah, I'm, I control the smoker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, was just I about control to say. the smoker and the barbecue. Like, I want do my you guys, steaks. Do you even have steaks. DoorDash at your house? No. Yeah, they got no cow way. dash. They just put it we on the back of the cow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Pop. I have my rifle and a smoker. That's my DoorDash. <laughs> Oh my That's god! So funny. Smoke a deer, throw it up on the rack, yeah. skin it, grab Never the backstraps of the tenderloins, throw them on the grill, and then take the rest of it to the butcher. He catch and cook. What's the weirdest day, thing you've ever eaten? 
Monkey brains. Ooh. Out of a skull of a monkey. No way. Where? Where the f- uh, I was in South Korea. Is that legal? <sighs> there it is. It's a delicacy. What about here? Mm. Where the <laughs> fuck do you get a monkey brain? No, I don't well, think Well, the you monkey can identifies do that. as a cow. I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it's a burger, bro. <laughs> oh. I've eaten that. I've eaten horse. I've eaten dog. Oh. Which I didn't know it was dog. You ate dog? Yeah, oh. I didn't know it was dog at the time. And like, I'm a huge dog person. Dog. Like, you love man. eating dog. Come no, on, dog. Whoa. You said you're I a said, huge dog person. Yeah. I like dogs more than like people. Like, I love my dogs. What, do- like, what kind of dogs do you have? I have a Dutch Shepherd. Oh, so you would hate our dog. I have a Dutch Shepherd. I have, and then Alexa, <laughs> my little sister, has... Two Australian Shepherds. I have one Australian Shepherd, and my parents have two. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I love my Australian Shepherd. They probably love I the absolutely ranch. love my Dutch Shepherd. Um, he's four months now. I was going to bring him with me, but he's a psycho. He would eat your couch. Yeah. Like, he eats everything. Oh, he's going to be a... Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll be track human tracking, uh, bomb scented, and a, and a bite dog. Oh, that's human awesome. Human tracking. Yeah. How do you train for that? Like how do Scent. We, yeah. So they... That's fucking crazy. So you train him how to track people. And then I'll, I'll send them on bombs. Oh my so God. So he can detect Crazy. bombs. And then bite work. So I could, like, even now I could have him over in the corner and put a sleeve on you and I could send him and he'll bite you. Dang. We were talking about maybe doing that because Alexa said maybe we we're going to bring the dog. But we were talking about, like, do you have a protection kit? So, like, yeah, like, he, he won't. I mean, he could dislocate your shoulder if you don't go with him. I'd be down. Dude, Kyler's scared of my you. golden retriever, dude. He couldn't yeah. do that. He, no, he's still I, a puppy. <laughs> he's still only four months old. But when I'll come back. Um, when he's done at like a year and a half, two Once years, he's like but he'll take up. you off your feet. Oh, that'd be so sick. That'd I'm, cool. I'm, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> like I have a video on my phone of one of the dogs from work and he dislocated and tore both the labrums of the guy. Dang. Wow. That's crazy. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Every every time it's a military I, working dog. He's yeah. a, he's a monster. Do you, do you think that if you didn't do snowboarding, you would have been in the military? Uh, yeah. I think so. Like I had, a, I, when I, I was going to enlist after snowboarding because I didn't know what I wanted to do with yeah. my career. I was in a dark place. Like I had no idea what was going on in my life. I was in a bad place and I was like, you know what? I want structure in my life. So I was thinking about it, um, an 18 x-ray or an option 40 contract. Mm-hmm. But I was a little bit older and I was making good money in business and I wasn't it's willing no to take a pay cut. Yeah. And like I have some other stuff going on, but yeah, just different time, different place. Mm-hmm. Possibly. For I mean, sure. I like I could, that. I could see you sniping some terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> I like that aspect. I like that world. I, I'm yeah. around it all the time. But so I feel like you have that mindset, too, of just yeah. like... It wasn't my it, path. Get it so done. Yeah. I'm not For mad sure. about it. But Did you always have this mindset, or is it something you developed over time? I had it. It just became more prevalent the older I got, and then after my accident, it just fully came out. Mm. Mm. I just don't have quit in me. Like, yeah, like Kobe, you know, <laughs> Kobe Quinn just on freaking Everest. We got to go to the top, dude. No, we're taking you to the, yeah, honestly, we should do I that now. We should train Kobe there. forever. There's, there's a difference between quit and just not wanting to do something. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. do it. Like if it's something that he's. Hey, if, if, if I like, I, I want, I want to like do other stuff, but I don't want to go to Mount Everest. You just want to go to the base. Yeah. He just wants to yeah. chill in the base. I'll chill by yeah, I'm down. What does that look oh, like? I'll do that. Kobe wants to shoot some guns. Dude. Yeah, we can shoot some guns. Okay, bro. I will literally. I like. I'll, I'll come, get you to shoot at a mile, no problem. I'll come next week. We should do like a like a basement talk training camp. No, 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 like dude. I want to do some sesh. primal shit. Like we have to start a fire, like without anything. Yeah. So at yeah. my ranch right now, I've been I have an apartment in the in the t- in town, um, but like four or five days a week, I live in a canvas tent. Oh no way! And I choose to do that. Oh, that's dude, so I'll literally, sick. I'll. I, that's something I'm like interested in G- doing. Give us each like a knife and a roll of duct tape and see who lasts the longest. Honestly, well, I can do just a put us in land- different parts of the forest. I'll do a land nav <laughs> course for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why just, a roll what of is duct that? tape? What is that? A land nav course. So I'll put like five plots on a ten-digit grid and teach you how to plot a ten-digit grid, and then you have to go to these points. Oh, so you hike so to these points. Because I have about two thousand acres. So do I we can- have guns and. Or I'll give you a gun. We, we need some callus. We do yeah, paintball we suburban fights? hands. No, right we'll I'm not do doing UTMs. I'm not, that? I'm not so getting shot. So you take, you take like my actual f- rifle and we put a blue bolt in it and you shoot paint rounds and it really hurts. You could do force on force. <laughs> I'm not what doing that. What if you get shot in the face? Mm, you put glasses on. Take it on, on. the fucking face, It just face, sucks. Dude. Jeez. We'll, we'll just shoot blanks. Yeah. <laughs> Zach's going to be aiming for my balls, dude. <laughs> dude what? what? The rule of the agreement is you don't try to shoot each other in the face. You shoot for center chest. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, sure. I am not doing that. I'm down. That would hurt so bad. I'm going to climb a tree. What? Kick Kobe from the top. 
We can go shoot uh, like we can go shoot coyotes. Yeah, I want to go shoot like pheasants and shit. Can we eat coyotes? No, we can eat rabbit. I eat rabbit all the time. Okay. <laughs> like midnight snack from somebody by the fire and I see a rabbit. I've always wanted to do, you know how like cowboys, the they like just slice one through and then skin the rabbit with one hand. I want to yeah. do that. Do you have like a Can-Am? They just pull it up. Uh, it off? No, I have an ATV right now. I'm That's buying cool. a Can-Am here. Oh, Dirt bike? Sick. Uh, no, just a quad. I, I, oh, dude. I like, riding dude. Di- I like riding dirt bikes, but for moving steel and working, they're useless There's to me. Yeah. 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 But... Yeah. Bro, this is sick. Time yeah, to enjoy maybe awesome. some UFC, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to watch the UFC so much for coming on. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. And we're, we're going to hang out right now. But that was awesome. Kyler, Zach, thank you. Alexa in the corner. Shout out Alexa. Shout out Alexa always. Thank shout you guys. out AJ. All his stuff will be in the bottom in the yeah, league. Yeah, we're yes, going to put AJ stuff in the bottom. If you guys like this video, please like this, like this, like subscribe. this, like this. Subscribe. subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're back in the basement. Uh and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see you guys the next Monday. Sober AJ's knocking you out at a bar. Yeah, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> All right, peace. peace. Done. Say what the be, I know the king. Follow his lead, repeat after me. I know they lurking, this serpent is circling, but I never worry because he got the keys. He let it bleed, never put me on the freeze. Just look at how he spin it to me. It'll be out of right after I see. You can't make the promise unless you the king. Jay with a baby, I am what he made me. No, you cannot save me, so it's for the birds. Buy for a price, you ain't know what it's worth. He not letting go like his grandma's purse.